Okay, well, I think we'll get started now. Um, I'm very happy to introduce this webinar. A very warm welcome to everybody joining. Uh, my name is Christina Swiderska. I lead IIED's work on biocultural heritage. I'm thrilled to open this webinar on Indigenous people's food systems and COVID-19, which is being organized by IIED and INMIP. INMIP is the International Network of Mountain Indigenous Peoples. So this is the, the second uh, webinar in the series of Indigenous Food Systems and COVID-19. In the webinar last week, we heard how INMIP communities in coastal Kenya and the Potato Park in Peru have experienced very little impact from COVID in terms of both their health and their food security, um, despite being near big cities which were badly affected like Mombasa and Cusco. So in these indigenous mountain communities, as well as other um, you know, rural communities in these areas, with indigenous food systems, there was not a single COVID related death. The communities that we heard from believe that this is due to their indigenous food system and the diets that they have, which are very rich in medicinal plants and in diverse native crops with medicinal properties. So they believe that has boosted their immune system. Um, and their food systems in these communities also ensured food security despite the, the lockdowns that these countries were experiencing. The Potato Park even produced large quantities of surplus food and seeds which they shared with other communities. So in the webinar today, we will hear from um, other members of the INMIP network, indigenous mountain communities in Guangxi province in southwest China, and also uh, it, Lepcha and Limbo communities in the Eastern Himalayas region of China. I mean, sorry, of India. So uh, just to introduce briefly um, INMIP, um, it is a, a global network of very innovative mountain communities and their partner organizations. It spans 13 countries in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. And it seeks to protect and revitalize biocultural heritage for community resilience, food sovereignty, and holistic well being. Since 2014, it has held global uh, exchanges, learning exchanges, bringing together all the mountain communities from different countries. And these exchanges have been he held in Bhutan, in Tajikistan, in Peru, and in Kyr Kyrgyzstan using a, a walking workshop um, methodology, sort of walking through the landscapes. And they have been highly effective for building the capacity of communities, for sharing innovations and for inspiring communities to protect their unique biocultural heritage and food systems and landscapes. So INMIP uh, plays a critical role in protecting uh, genetic resources and indigenous food systems for global food security uh, today and in the future. Um, its members um, are communities in centers of origin and diversity of crops, like the Potato Park in Peru, the Apple Park and Wheat Park in Tajikistan, and um, other communities protecting apricot diversity and walnut forests in Kyrgyzstan. And here in China, uh, these communities have a rich diversity of waxy maize and rice. Um, and in India, they have many different varieties of, of crops, including dryland and aromatic rice in the Himalayas. And all these communities also sustain a wealth of under, underutilized species. Um, and so um, they also um, continue to link wild crop relatives and domestic crops um, to enhance resilience to climate change. So um, following uh, my introduction, I'm going to hand over to Alejandro Argumedo, who will chair the webinar today. Alejandro is the international coordinator of INMIP, and he is also the president of the board of directors of Asociación Andes, an indigenous NGO in Peru. Over to you, Alejandro. 
Thank you, Christina, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And we thank you very much for uh, your um, participation in this webinar of the um, EMIP network. As Christina has mentioned, EMIP is a broad alliance of communities and indigenous people's organizations across the 13 countries uh, in mountain uh, regions. Um, and we, since um, over 10 years now, are part of this global struggle for food sovereignty and maintaining the vitality of indigenous food systems. Um, our overall vision are holistic communities that um, not only are resilient, but maintain that indigenous vision of living uh, closely and in harmony with nature, uh, with Mother Earth. And so um, uh, our um, work over the last 10 years has been one of um, making more um, um, resilient and, and viable our food producing habitats and mountains, but also uh, our concern for uh, our own territories and uh, the rights associated to indigenous peoples, particularly those that have been um, uh, sanctioned by the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. IMIP um, has um, pledged, um, all the members have pledged that uh, to uh, move and uh, promote Agenda 2030, particularly in terms of how we can contribute to end hunger and poverty uh, in the mountain areas. Um, however, over the last um, you know, 10, 15 years, we have seen how hunger, and especially undernourishment, um, has rise widely um, worldwide. And uh, the COVID um, crisis, which is a theme of, uh, of interest of this webinar, um, has exposed how the industrial food system and these globalized food systems that um, uh, dominates the world now has contributed to ecological destruction. Uh, we see, you know, the expanding uh, soya plantations in Brazil, cattle ranching, and different types of extractive industry. Um, in Amazonia and in Africa and other parts parts of the world, so that uh, those activities are, uh, in in fact, directly related to this jumping of um, unknown viruses into animals and moving uh, into um, the into humans and therefore, um, a, you know, creating these types of pandemics. Indigenous peoples have um, faced these type of pandemics um, over, um, over the centuries uh, since, um, you know, contact um, and uh, the colonial period in, in, in the different countries. And, Though um, the resilience is there, these types of um, um, uh, <clears throat> new um, global pandemics obviously are resulting in unprecedented loss uh, of livelihoods, particularly for um, uh, uh, you know people living in in, uh, in in isolated areas like the mountains. Um, we um, we see um, that uh, the global uh, policy making has been trying to make efforts um, to solve this problem. 
but um, this unfortunately have moved towards um, supporting um, uh, you know more uh, or the same uh, the current uh, uh, <clears throat> food system summit that will be taking place at the end of this month in New York it um, shows how governments are abdicating their responsibilities and the regulatory functions that they, they must have favoring market-based mechanisms and this new idea of a stakeholder approach which allows government not to have um, the responsibility that they should be um, they should have in terms of responding to the needs of the citizens so in our view, there has been a corporate capture of this policy space, and this is preventing um, efforts that already have been made uh, within the, um, the, the Commission on Food Security uh, of the FAO uh, in, in Rome, and is causing more marginalization and discrimination, particularly for small farmers. Um, this poses uh, a structural challenge, um, and um, uh, we um, have uh, discussed these issues and um, concluded that um, we have to participate in an alternative way and express not just our concerns, but our commitment to maintain our food producing habitats, our ecosystems healthy, and provide the healthy food, the diverse food that the indigenous food systems have been provided over, over the years. Um, uh, whatever decisions are going to be made, um, I think are going to affect directly uh, our health, the environment, um, the climate adaptation that's pretty much needed, um, social and, and uh, economical governance of the association between the communities and um, the national governments. So it is within this broader context um, that this uh, webinar uh, is taking place. Um, we um, uh, want to ensure that um, the voices of communities uh, in these um, uh, regions, mountain regions, are here, and that uh, the right to adequate, uh, adequate food uh, that um, communities have um, and the relation to the land, which is the basis of um, you know, most of the economies of uh, small farming communities, fisher folk, and um, all the communities that populate um, a mountain regions are considered uh, in this, um, these discussions. Um, I think um, it's very urgent, um, a transformation of these uh, food systems that we have, but we need a, a transformation that's grounded in human rights, on indigenous people rights, and in a system change for justice and for inclusion of um, uh, small farmers and, and communities across the world. And we need uh, a space of policy making that's not dominated by corporate interest. And uh, we have um, <clears throat> to stop this attempt to replace uh, you know, national institutions or international public institutions multi with multi-stakeholder platforms uh, where corporate interests easily dominate um, the discussions and any type of um, a possible solution that will be proposed. So, um, EMIP has committed, um, you know, to keep working to um, create solutions that are holistic, that 
uh, attacks this multiple crisis based on the traditional knowledge on the thousand years of experience of uh, farmers and mountain communities. <coughs> We're going to continue um, advocating and making uh, uh, be part of this struggle uh, to <clears throat> dismantle this corporate power in, in the food systems, uh, which um, at the moment, uh, and unfortunately, many of our governments uh, is um, increasing their power and the regulatory um, <clears throat> uh, um, uh, options that we have in favor of corporations. We need to democratize this process and um, increase the um, participation of communities in a meaningful way. So with that in mind, I'm very happy to um, pass to introduce my colleagues from uh, China and India uh, who have like, this uh, fantastic experience that Christina has mentioned um, the, in the Eastern Himalayas and in the in the um, um, Wanxi and uh, uh, Yunnan regions of um, of China. Um, so um, I will I will pass the the floor to our. Uh, dear friends in, in China, in Liston Village. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yi Qi Song, and I'm representing a uh, China case, uh, uh, leader of the IMEX of China. Uh, China is as the initial very first group to join IMEX and uh, join for a uh, force with uh, other IMEX countries, uh, uh, cases with, uh, in, uh, in other countries. And uh, we have uh, more uh, around 40 uh, mountain community in our IMIP network. And most of those community are in Guangxi and Yunnan. As uh, Alejandro just mentioned, uh, Yunnan uh, and Guangxi are Southwest China are the mountain uh, communities with very rich uh, agro-diversity and the bioculture. So with those community we have working uh, more than more than uh, more than uh, fifteen years. Uh, for example, in this Masan community, we're working with this Masan community since two thousand until now. The first entry point is uh, uh, agro biodiversity conservation and the utilization uh, through PPP tours. That's why we choose Masan to represent uh, uh, China's IMIP country, uh, country case this time, and. Uh, in, in very importantly, our uh, IMIP uh, mountain community has played a very key role in the in the past year during the COVID nineteen, and they trying to they trying to uh, adapt to this uh, COVID nineteen crisis using their community seed bank, and uh, uh, and the, and they have a seed in their community seed bank, and they can do in their agroecology. And they even form into uh, farmer cooperatives and uh, uh, exchange their vegetables and the food with the neighboring communities. So they have done amazing work. So this is not only in this community, also in other communities. We have uh, published uh, one uh, report about uh, the mountain communities' roles in co. In co uh, uh, during COVID-19, so, uh, in the whole country, so more than 30 communities have joined force and adapted, adapting to the COVID-19 crisis. This is one aspect. In the other aspect, they're also coping, uh, coping with uh, uh, climate change every day. In the spring, they have a spring drought, and the summer, big flood, and also increase pest, uh, uh, pest in the insects. But they try to use their uh, biodiversity, to use their uh, uh, customer laws, to use their traditional wisdom to cope in with all those uh, uh, crises and continue their farming and produce uh, food and healthy food uh, to do in uh, agroecology. 
So it's very important that they emphasize those uh, the roles and support the, those uh, um, mountain communities to sustain our food systems. This is what I want to emphasize here. And today there are a number of uh, community members, community leaders, uh, and even the uh, readers from Guangxi Maize Research Institute join our meeting here. Because today is a, a, have a big ring outside. We have a less than what is expected. Uh, uh, some uh, communities, uh, members, they live a little bit far, they cannot come. But still, uh, they try their best to come to gathering here. And then they may also have a, 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 some, they will also want to show our landscape and the cultural performance, but limited by the, uh, by the weather and also uh, the time. So we're trying to put together a five minutes uh, cultural performance. So uh, we started to show the cultural performance. Thank you.
Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Rongyan Lu from Sangkula Village of Hu Zai Community, um, Ma Shan in Guangxi Province in China. I'm very grateful to the Inmap giving me the opportunity to represent China community member to share our experiences and cultural practices to everyone here today. Woman here we have an old saying about our landscape. Um, our landscape consists of 90% rock and 10% land. So um, with very limited arable land, we also face severe challenge by climate change. Uh, we have spring drought and summer flood during the year. So the, the people's livelihood here is also constrained by this situation. So a lot of our young people go to the city to work. So back in 2001, I'm very happy to meet Yi Ching Song from the Chinese Academy of Sciences and Lan Chiu Qin from Guangxi Maze Research Institute. With their support, we started our project here in Guzhai. So what we started is we start to collect our traditional land races and start to replant those land races in our field. With the characteristics of the land races, we went back to the traditional circular farming models so we don't use uh, chemical inputs in our land anymore. And every household is trying their best to, to join force. This is the best model for us because the input is, is, is small for us, and we try to pick out the best suited local variety to test out the market and try to link to the market. So during this 20 years to work with um, the Farmers Seed Network, with a lot of experts and scientists and policymakers coming to our community, we also broaden our way of thinking. And we decided is the term to establish a farmer's professional cooperative to establish our own trademark 
to link to the market. So with the improved livelihood, our community members now realize is not just about getting better yield, it's also about getting more nutritious and healthier food to feed their family. So every member of the cooperative is doing their best to, to conserve biodiversity and the sustainable utilization of this genetic resources. So from June 2006 to February 2012, we have been doing um, bio, community biodiversity register every year through registration, documentation, and community C plot experiments, PPB and PVS. We try to uh, sort out the best suited uh, varieties for ecological farming. So we coordinate uh, farmers' few visits to summarize the good, the best practices for the ecological farming. And during this period, we also revitalize the, the circular farming of pig, biogas, vegetable, uh, maize, and also goes back to pig. Yeah. So during this period, we tested out, we picked out the best suited variety, which is the child shoot. Um, yeah, let us show you what what we mean about uh, uh, so with planting this variety, farmers, they don't have to put into a lot of input and the market, the market response is very good and we get a fair price for selling this. Yeah. And this, this, this variety is very good for ecological farming because whoever puts chemical input in the field and it dies right away. Um, so it's, it's best suited with circular and ecological farming. So we normally plant this variety around November and we start to harvest this variety from April. So it, it goes all the way to uh, October. So we can harvest this child shoot for around eight months during the year. It provides the community members stable income during the period. And this variety due to the water and soil here it actually tastes better than other child shoots variety in Guangxi. So we receive positive market feedback. So 
，就是比喻你弟宋，比宋吉达的翻了两两三倍。And by growing this variety, the community cooperative、uh, members, their incomes doubled. Compared to growing the traditional maize and、uh, maize varieties, we are in many aspects have a certain distribution of maize. In 2012, in 2012, on the 29th, so with all this solid foundation, we register the Rongyan professional. Uh, circular farming cooperative back in March 2012. 这人从慈溪人，慈溪老慈溪一个老人到现在，呃，老人、年轻人、中年人，三百七十三人。So back in 2012, we only have 17 members, mostly、uh, our elders. And now we have three hundred and seventy-three members, including women, elders, and some male, some young male. Zhong Xi from Wu Mo, Wu Mo Di, to now eight hundred and fifty. And the planting area also expands from five mu to eight hundred plus mu. So think about it. 从很多贫困户家庭不作物，现在作物了一年一万五，五千以上。So during the China's poverty, uh, the the poverty eradication um implementation period, actually our per cooperative play a very positive role in improve the poor households. Um, income level. So during the period, um, a lot of um household mothers and some elders they used to have zero income in their family, and was growing the child shoots. They now have a average of household、uh, average income of one thousand to two thousand Chinese yuan. 消除了原来在家等告要思想。So now every household is very happy. 有了自己的亲戚、私生，家庭地位大大提高了。Especially for some of the females in the community, because now they can earn a stable income, so they also have a saying in their family now. 特别是在去年二零二零年疫情期间，很多劳动力不能外出木工。So during the uh the COVID nineteen lockdown period back in twenty twenty. The the during the spring festival season, a lot of the migrant workers during the lockdown they're not they were not allowed to go to the cities to work. Because they couldn't go to the city to work, and they just went back to their field to grow the child shoots with their family members. 自己也是种了几个品种，南瓜、苗、蛇瓜、水瓜，送送进自己的技术管理。And we are not very contained with only have one star variety. So during this period, we are very positive to do participatory varietal selection to pick out some other、um, locally adaptive、uh, varieties. Other vegetable varieties, yeah. 年轻人懂得微信，就用微信群直播销售自己的品牌，网站又又销售，送货上门，人都很高兴。So with this young labor staying in the village, 
and they 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 are they are very versatile with the smartphone usage. So they also use their um, social media channels to promote and sell this uh, ecological vegetables and receive a positive market feedback as well. So as we can see, our background is actually the cooperative's cold storage room. So, so Yiqing is trying to open the, yeah. So in May and June this year, during the highest harvest uh, season, so we received a lot of the child shoots. Um, Thirteen to fourteen young people they join us to go to the nearby cities to promote our variety and try to create more market channels to sell this uh this goods. So with the young people join us. They think positively and they are very active to look for new market channels to promote the local goods. Uh, so we are trying to um, build a urban and rural market linkage. So as the cooperative leader, I'm very happy to see a trend for the young people. They are willing to stay home and help their family to do ecological farming now because they can earn similar wage while compared to going to the city to find work. <laughs> so with all the family members stay together in the community, we see a more harmonious community here. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> So, so you only see a few faces now because um, now is actually our busy time to feed the family and pigs. So we we gather quite a few cooperative members to represent our three hundred. 73 members. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, any questions? We have um, a few questions in, in the chat. Um, so, uh, if anyone has a question, would you like to put your camera on and say it directly so the community can see you? Yeah. Um, Shanta D, would you like to ask your question directly with your camera? If not, I can just read it. Okay, so the question from um, somebody called Sushanta Day, uh, she would like to know, um, do you take the soft portion of the trunk of the banana tree as a vegetable? In India, we prepare a dish from that. Uh, this is, this is 
发酵中断的那个心拿出来，是拿来当食物吃的。先，他先吃了食的。原来吃了啊，原来原来没有一起吃，就吃剩下一起吃。原来是大概多少年前嘛、啊？以前啊，很久很久，专门这个年代的人吃。啊，五五斤呢。啊 ，we we also eat it here, but we see a a different trend for the past uh fifty years because for the elders here they said um when they face full. Uh, shortage. They actually used to eat that to to feed themselves, but now they also eat it, but they eat it as a cuisine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, somebody from the Philippines say they use the banana flowers, roots, leaves, and the trunk for fiber. So um, just to share that with you. I, I would love to know um, what was the name of the plant that the, the farmer showed? Um, what type of crop was it? Is it some kind of spinach? Oh, it's more of like a squash. Uh -huh. We'll tell you later, Christina. Okay. Um, I was wondering, could I ask, um, did you, uh, how were you impacted by the COVID in terms of your health and, and your food system? Did people die in your community or did you have people very sick or, or not? And if not, why, why do you think that was? Uh, <laughs> zero, we got zero infection in this community. Because we are in the mountainous community and we have very good air quality. I think that's the main <laughs> reason. Yeah. <laughs> and the isolated also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This member is 81 years old and she. 81 years old. She's still dancing. Dancer. Yeah, and she still goes to the field and work every single day. Yeah, so every morning she goes into the field to pick out the, the child shoes around 10 kilograms. Yeah, this is how healthy she is. She's dancing every day. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, do, does the your food system, all the uh, different varieties that you eat, do you think that has helped you um, to stay healthy, including um, uh, in the face of COVID? <laughs> Yeah, so every month we have 
We also eat some wild vegetables. So every month we have fresh harvest. So we have a very diversified food system here. That's amazing. I thought it was the rice wine. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> we have one more question uh, from a person in the chat, if that's okay. Sanju, okay. would you like to say your question? Uh, yeah, thank you for your presentation. Very interesting. And I'm, I'm quite sort of you know, amazed by, um, you know, the suddenly that, you know, this um, this particular shoot variety is becoming popular, particularly with cooperatives. So I was thinking, you know, is this something that very special to the mountains or it can be also grown in the lowlands and whether this is a drought resistant variety that uh, people uh, that elders remember it. Uh, during food shortages, because, you know, if there's mountain drought, then does this shoot variety actually sustain the, the climate change that you're talking about? So I was just interested in the history of it. Is it a drought resistant one or not? Yeah, thank you. so actually in this community they've been eating this um the child squash for a very long time but before they didn't try to eat the child shoots actually mm -hmm. i think yiching came here and taught everybody how to eat pumpkin <laughs> <laughs> pumpkin shoots okay. yeah the pumpkin shoots because they these farmers here, they used to use those wine to feed pigs. They don't eat those wines. They only eat the pumpkin or the, the, shoot, the squash. But after Yi Qing came here and telling everybody that, wow, this is very yummy. You should try to eat this and try to eat that. And they started to realize, okay, maybe we could try to eat some of the shoot. Thank you very much, Irene, and everybody. That's been a wonderful uh, presentation. Can we clap? Thank you so much. We need to move on to the India presentation now. Uh, but um, Ni Hao Shi Shi Ah, can you translate? But please, you can stay and, and uh, maybe if you have translation, uh, listen to the India one too. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Thank you. yes, we will Thank stay. Thank you very much. So now, Naraj, are you ready to uh, provide your introduction, please? Uh, greetings from India. Hi. So Hi. I'll just introduce the uh, uh, country a little bit then uh, regarding the place and landscape where we work, our community will represent, uh, they will represent it later on. So, okay. Uh, India is a country of around 1.4 billion people, population. And uh, though it has the 2.4% of world's land area, India harbors around 8% of all recorded species, <laughs> including over 45,000 plant and 91,000 animal species. 
Four out of 34 global biodiversity hotspot are in India, and Eastern Himalaya is one of them. 70% of rural households still depends primarily on agriculture for their livelihood. It's in the national level. And Lingse and Lingseka, the place where we, where we work and the, where the, our farmers has come from, are situated at the northeast part of India. It's in the West Bengal. And it is bordering with Sikkim, Bhutan, and Nepal. As far as COVID is concerned, at present, there are around 400,000 active cases in India, which were once 800,000 during 2020. So it is in decreasing trend. Major metro and capital cities like Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore were the initial epicenter for transmission of COVID-19 in India. During 2020 pandemic, pandemic migrant workers from rural area of plains returned to their village in large numbers. This became one of the major cause of spreading diseases in rural India. Similarly, in our project village, Lingse Lingseka, till, till early 2021, there was not any single case of COVID-19. And this was highly appreciated and recognized by the state government. However, when the migrant workers started coming back to village during 2021, that was the election time also, few incidents of COVID-19 were reported in our villages also. People believe that because of natural, so natural social distancing, nutritious, nutritious local food and hard work in the field made them strong and immune to the infection of COVID-19 in rural area of mountain region. Because of lockdown, overall natural environment has improved in remote areas. Many birds and animals started re-emerging. People, especially youth, started working more in the field and agriculture production has improved because those who have returned from the cities and capital cities to the rural area after the, this lockdown was declared. So they started work, they have plenty of time in the village to work. And uh, so production has naturally improved. These days, people are more concerned about overall in, in villages. These days, people are more concerned about health and started eating more, more, and, more and more local food. India produces self sufficient food in the country. So, during the impact of COVID 19, government is distributing rice, wheat regularly to general public free. So, overall, in India, there was no dearth of food in the rural area also because they were getting free ration from the government every month. At least six kg of rice, six kg of wheat every month for individual. As for the recent information, 56.6% 56 of the Indian adult population has been vaccinated with at least one dose. Also 17.4% of the adult population has been vaccinated with both the doses. So this is a brief uh, introduction about the country. So now we'll pass on to our farmers for their individual presentation. Or Matt will play the video clip of. Yeah, so the, the video is of the Lingse Lingsika community that's the member of the Inmit network. Hidden amongst the majestic eastern Himalayas at around 4,800 feet, preserved in its own traditional charm, sits the small village of Lingse. Sharing one of its borders with the Neora Valley National Park, Lingse comprises of both temperate as well as subtropical zones. The inhabitancy consists of five to six different mountain tribes, amongst which the Lepchas and the Limbos being the oldest settlers. One thing that keeps the solidarity within these tribal groups is simply their love and respect towards the nature. Okay. 
लिखित में तस्त इतिहास लेखे रखे छेन हम कथा में हम रीति रीति में आस में लेप्चा घर बना बस को लेप्चा अगड़ी उन्नी उन्नी बार बारे कलो खाएर जंगलक शिकार करी खाए जंगल में बसोबसो घर को बाबू से शिकार में जानते अरे नौ डाड़ा और नौ खोला पारीपटि चाहिए एटा बुढ़ा बुढ़ी बस को अरे सेतो कपाल भाई भोक तीर लगे आज बास यहाँ बस्त पैले बिहान से उंगो लगे मत हिम पुर्या हिम से बुढ़ा ऊ तल मेल क्यों मेल प्रताम भाई मेल तुम तैं गए खेती करे खा यो पशु पंछी मर ना अभी आर से ढालफाड़ कर खेती लगन था अगड़ी लेप्चा जंगल में बसा खाकोह धरें पतन भैस किच्छा भेग यो गाई खुरे भाषा एवं उन्ऊ में तर तो गाई खुरे गाई खुरे तिहार खाथ तकट्री तकट्रील अरे संगड़ा पांग्रा कुलुक In the Atchison village, we also spoke to the Limbus in order to know about their side of the story. हमरे पुरखो आको 1860 को कुरा करनो थियो उहाँले फेरि उहाँहरुको खेती थियो पंगदुर घैया जुनेलो अनि अर्को कागुनी टाइप हो तिनीहरु गिठा डल्लो डल्लो हुन्छ तितो हुन्छ यसको पनि लाउनु हुन्थ्यो अरे अब जस्तै खेती सीमित थियो पहिले अब पाङ्दुर ल्याउँथ्यो पाङ्दुरको बाद तपाईँको यो घैया धान लायो घैया धानको बाद मिठे फापर थिएन अरे तिते फापर थियो अरे जो पनि हामीले अहिले खानै सक्दैन तिते फापर अनि तिते फापरको रोटी बनाएर खानु हुन्थ्यो अरे कि अरे आनी काल में तीते पाती खाँदा खेल बाजे को रोकजाम निवारण भर कथा कर तीते फापर अभी हम लिंबू जाति खाने कुरो भेग रुको तीत ठूल दाना पल्स मतलब बिहान उसी खाने दि अब खाना नखाई भाई हेल्थ भी राम खोला किनार कहाँ औल तीर जीरे खोर्सानी लाइले चोटी खानु था भोर्सानी उत्पन्न हो खोला किनार देखी हमारा करेला अब हम सब्जी हम खाँच हमें करेला करेला भी खोल देखी उत्पन्न भो क्योंकि मछा बार जाना खेल बुढ़ो करेला जस्तों देखते हो अमला जो रुजो लिया खाँदा तीतो रहे घैया तो अब धे चीज होते हैं अब धेरे न घर में घर ने एक मुरी एक मन दुई मन तीन मन तीन तो कट्ठा कर ले अब कति खानु अब ते पछाड़ी मकई को आविष्कार भ मकई अलग था मकई तब को अब तब को जून देख था जून जुलाई अगस्त सेप्टेम्बर समय मकई था अक्टूबर देखि अक्टूबर नवंबर फिर घैया पाक शिशिर ऋतु लगे ये अब फल फूल ने गुजा पर्यटन तरुण ने गुजा पर्यटन अब जत पाई हाल धेरे मात्रा में तेरी उन्ना वर्ष काट थे पाली देखि नहीं रोपी हो मकई पाली देखि नहीं आक हो अभी धान खेती पे पैले देखि नहीं आक खेत हो तर पैले अब अरुण धान रोप्थ तर अ रोप्ते अब धान ये जैसे अब मसिनो आटे भाषा खसरो आटे भाषा खसरो आटे अलग पुरानों धान तो अल्लेम अब यहाँ रोप रहा चल रखे कोदो अम चल अब फापर कहीं कहीं अब छर्द तोरी पैले थी तर अब तैंती बीच में अलग निके हरा गए अब तोरी चाहे प्राय मानी अब अलग लेख में छर्द तोरी लिनक धे चाहिए इस मल धे चाहिए जी मल रो बना रोपे तोरी मनक फल्स अब तीन मेहनत अब हम यहाँ को मांगेन With the information from this gentleman, we gathered a group of villagers of different age groups in order to know about the past and the present situations. I just say, Uyile ka bandha sa dehre na hamro zamin kitte ko jostho lakh sa. Tio time ma sa, saapai ko hamro lake ma sa tio aora jungle lao sa tio rat niyola bandhi. 
मकई को जंग माला होता है तबे को मकई एक फुट अंदाजी को हॉल थियो अनितियो शैन एरिया लाई चाहिए बांस नो पार दा चाहिए तीन दिन जस्ता लाख थियो तो र आज जा चाहिए दूर जाना क्या ताले ठाप टी एक्सीन में सॉक्स थे जी जस्ते ही अन्ना बारी पानी अब रामनाथ संगले मकई में फलता है ना दान पुनी फलता है ना बोधम फलता है ना ते ही बाहर पैसा सब नहीं आये सब तो पाये ऐसे अंदर ते बस्ती को काम ते ही कारण ले गानों छोड़े कम चीन खाना से उइले से गिट्ठा बिया करते हैं क्या खाना दिन थे ना इन्हें उइले को उइले को लाइफ जा वो तीस तारीख हो अब वो खाना मचा उइले को राम रो Thank you so much. I'm so sorry, Naraj. I didn't introduce you properly. I just wanted to say this is Naraj Gurung, who is uh, from the uh, Lok Chekna Manch uh, NGO in the Himalayas, uh, based in Kalimpong. Please uh, continue. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Christina. So my friend uh, Nima Lepcha will give his presentation. Hamri mo. मॉल लिंक से लिंक से काफी लेस बोला आ हम लोग यू पौराणिक खेती बारिक वो विषय लिए रहो लिंक से लिंक से काम लिंक से काम बित्र होने अन्य आठ की नौ किस्म को नौ किस्म को होने सा मकाई धान कोदो भापौर अन्य अन्य तारा हमें लिए यू खेती बारिक और रखे रही सही कई लोगों ने हमें लिए सरकारी आह मोल सोल लायर जो यूज़ हो उन्हें ना तो हम लोग से यूज़ ही सप्पे ऑर्गेनिक सिस्टम में से यो काम करें जा तेरे देखिए हम लोग गांव में पहुंचे जस्तो सो व्हाट हीज़ टेलिंग इज़ हीज़ निमा लिप्चा फ्रॉम लिंक्से लिंक्से का सो द दे डू ऑल ट्रेडिशनल कल्टीवेशन ट्रेडिशनल एग्रीकल्चर एंड दे ग्रो � आह लिंक से लिंक से काम दाल तीस रात चालीस प्रकार को होने सा कालो दाल कालो मस्यम ठंगरे मस्यम ढोडे मस्यम ढोडे मस्यम आह अपॉइंटी दाल अन्य अन्य दाल रूपी देर प्रकार को होने सा योपनी है मिलने से ऑर्गेनिक सिस्टम हम नहीं कर सों किना बंदे किला है मिला ही ऑर्गेनिक सिस्टम कर दा केरी आ हम लोग मस सरकार वाले से सपोर्ट से सही ना बंद हो पड़े बंद हो पड़ता सही व्हाट हिस चिलिंग इज सर बिसाइड्स डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल सीरियल्स दे आल्सो ग्रो डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ बिंस फैमिली लाइक अराउंड ऑलमोस्ट थर्टी टू फोर्टी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ बिंस दे ग्रो एंड � what he's telling is, while doing this uh, cultivation in an organic way, they don't have any support from the government. Yes, sir. In a sabji, ma hindo maina ma saak saak mula si bi motor motor kopi palki anya sabji hindo ma pai ne sa. Barkha ma barkha ma hune sabji haru iskus munta iskus munta a si bi farsi si bi ma farsi jungle bato ningro. Uh, I'll, uh, what he's telling is the different season in a year, they get different kind of vegetables from their own field as well as from the uh, forest, they call it, which are very nutritious and very, they have uh, all medicinal values in these vegetables. The, in rainy season, they have different kind of vegetables they collect from the field and the forest. And winter season also, they collect different kind of vegetables. So whole round the year, in the different season, they eat different kind of vegetables locally formed. Yes, sir. In Kandamul, Ghar Taru, Bhan Taru, Iskus Jara, Iskus Taru, Sakar Khanda, Simal Taru, Pindalu, Pindalu, Githa Bagol, Itiya Divini, Amra Gaumwa Chai, Pahincha. Similarly, they also eat lot of root crops almost uh, he named more than uh, 10 15 root crops which is found in they cultivate as well as some of them they collect from the forest and mostly they eat in the winter pasu palan lingse 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 khama chai pray jasto pasu palan palan dherai jaso garcha dherai jaso garcha पालन गौर सकी ना बने कि ना बने यहाँ का मैंने जरूर ले खेती बाली बाली मैं पशु को मोल लगाऊं ने लगाऊं ने गौर गौर सन। They also do lot of livestock rearing because they do cattle farming because they need lot of cow dung manure for organic 
agriculture. Uh, sorry, they also eat a lot of meat from this uh, domestic animals. So that is another reason for uh, rearing these domestic animals. Besides uh, uh, eating this cattle meat and other things, they also get milk, uh, cottage cheese, butter, and so many other dairy products which they sell and they get cash income. Also, cash income is and for cash income, they do some uh, cash crops like cardamom, broomstick, ginger, uh, some kind, uh, to some extent potato, they get cash income from these crops. Sometimes uh, when there is no good harvest, some if crop fails, they have a practice of exchanging seed from within village or from village to village. Uh, they have the practice of traditional practice of exchanging seeds. So thank you. Uh, hello, you like to ask any questions to him or we will we'll go to another presentation. Uh, there, there are no questions so far in the chat, so why don't we move on? Thank you. Okay, so we'll go for next presentation. Chiawaro, Linsing Limbu Community. This is Amro Rio Linsing Linsigama, one in June, Amro Porani Cantinsa, Porani Cantin, Monoko, Amro Matan, Odo, Makai, Gaun, Hapo, Zau, Ua, Junelo, your Italian and Kani Bosom, your Kanu, your Kanu, your Kanu parents, and the case of me, Amro Abu, Jamin, Abu Zora Town, Abu Matu, Ujako, and Kani Bosom. Okay, what is telling is uh, as he his predecessor, he is also from Lingseka, Mr. Dilip Limbu. Uh, he is telling like they grow a lot of cereal crops, as I already mentioned, maize, wheat, paddy, bajra other thing, wheat also. And uh, they get almost 75% of the, their annual requirement, they grow themselves, most of the people. Some of them, they grow a little bit less, but mostly they grow at least 75% 75, 75 of the cereals they get from their own field. Uh, Kodo <laughs> Okay. So uh, one of the most important cereal crop they grow is millet, finger millet, which is important for their rituals. And they, they make uh, many, many cousins from this uh, millet. So one of the most important cousin is the fermented, they ferment the millet and they, they, they take it as a kind of a beer. So, which is required for all the rituals, and even in the working in the field, it it satisfies your thirst, and also 
it also um, uh, it also acts as a food for them and it also gives little bit of uh, kick which is good for them to in working in the field uh, in vegetables, also seasonal vegetables, they take, they grow and eat different kind of vegetables. Some of them have uh, medicinal values, especially the bee, which is uh, also helpful in controlling diabetes and other kind of things. So most of the vegetables which they eat in different season, they also think it has got medicinal value. So they collect a lot of vegetables from the forest and most of them they think that it has got medicinal value and this uh, chingping and uh, so many other uh, spices like thing but it's a medicinal plant they make chutney or pickles out of that in their regular dish. Right. <laughs> So what he's telling is this, uh, this fever, cold, cough, this kind of problem was earlier. They had severe problems of this kind of problem. They think the COVID and Corona, this disease was there earlier also. And their ancestors, and they used to make kind of uh, medicinal herbal, plant, herbal medicines of this chingping, hanakpa, the different kind of medicines from the forest, and they used to get it cured. So that is that may be the one reason that in their village they don't have any COVID incidents so far. <laughs> So besides uh, other uh, properties of the medicine, this thing has so many uh, other, uh, if you are feeling uh, kind of um, not well, just uh, generally, that time also they can just use this thing to rub in your body and it can be uh, useful for them. It is also a very good spices for the meat preparation. Uh, similarly, they have a, another medicinal plant which is called Chirota, which is very popular, which is uh, used for uh, when there is fever. Uh, they will make a, a juice kind of thing and they eat for uh, recovering from the fever. 
They believe that because of all these medicinal uh, medicinal plants and uh, vegetables and nutritious food, that COVID is checked in their village. Okay, should we go to another presentation? Oh yes, please go ahead. So wow, we have two more presentations. Two more. Two more. Two more. She is Premkit Lepcha from Lingse, and she says that uh, Lepchas are the worshipper of the environment, so they have very close relationship with the forest. Yes, Karan, you jati lai one jungle ka dhere bhanda dhere kisim ka samay anusar new do barkha ma pai ne kanda mul fwal kul rasak sabji chao ane aushadi ko so because since they have a very close relationship with the forest, they have uh, they have significant amount of knowledge about these plants and its uses. In winter, they besides other crops, they eat a lot of root crops in winter. And in rainy season, besides other regular food, they also eat a lot of fish and other uh, other animals which are found in the river. So they have a lot of dependency on the forest for their livelihood and they are very hard working. They consider maize as a uh, is a king of the cereals, and they make different kind of recipe out of maize. Since Lepchas, they have, as earlier said, Lepchas, they have very close relation with the forest. They, their life is mostly dependent on the forest. They get, uh, um, they get a lot of vegetables and other edibles for the forest. And they also uh, do fishing and a little bit hunting because since they have the taste of this kind of food, even now, um, even now, uh, Look at TVK or no? Even now, without without the notice of the government, they go to forests and occasionally they do hunting, they fishing and collect this uh, edibles. Since the uh, our elders, they used to eat different kind of this kind of food from the forest as well from the locally grown medicinal value fruits. So our ancestors live for a long time and they are very healthy compared to the younger generation. Uh, 
खाइरहेका हुनाले अहिले धेरै किसिमको रोग देखा लागेर हामी अल्प आयुमा बाँच्नु परिरहेका छौँ बट एट द प्रेजेन्ट डे बिकज अफ द टेस्ट एन्ड द अदर एट्रेक्सन पिपल गो एन्ड बाय पिपल बाय लट अफ फुड फ्रम द मार्केट विच मिन्स दे आर बाइङ दे आर बाइङ सिक दे आर बाइङ इलनेस वेल बाइङ द मोर्डन फुड फ्रम द टाउन ओके थ्याङ्क यू Okay, now the last presentation. विशेष हम गांव में कोविड कमती हम गांव को जो बनावट छोटे घर अलग दूरी दूरी में टा टाड़ पर्चे हमें अब सारे अब मानेस जमघट होते हैं दोसों कुरो हम आप ट्रेडिशनल जड़ीबुटी सेवन कर जैसे अब यह चिंगिंग भो खनाक्का चिरोटोर रहा खोला को पहा गरक अब कुखुरा को सुप हु सुप भी बेस खाँचा हम अब शरीर तंदुरुस्त रखनी Uh, he is uh, Kumar Limbu, a community researcher from Lingse. So what he is telling is like why the COVID incident was not much in their village because they because the the settlement in their village is very scattered. So there is the, the, there is a kind of a social naturally social distancing is there. So uh, and another thing is they. the food they eat is mostly local and which has got most of the this uh, food they eat has a traditional value and they also know that there is a lot of medicinal plants of which they make small chutney and they also eat a uh, lot of soup out of this vegetables and and the fish and other animals from the forest दोसों कुरा हम अब अलग बीमार होता हम घर में ओछन लगे सुत्ते ओछन लगे सुत्त को बदला में हम अब जंगल को हरिपरी में गए खेत को गाँव बस्ती को हम खेत बारी में गए काम कर इम्पोर्टेन्ट थिंग इज लाइक इफ देर इज लाइट आई मीन लिटल सिकनेस इज देर लाइक इफ फिवर वेरी लाइट फिवर एंड आई मीन नट मच सीरियस प्रॉब्लम इन देर Uh, in their health they don't go and sleep in the bed they will go back to field and they work and they will try to overcome this uh, sickness by working and doing exercise in the field aba hamro gaun ma chai aba 21 2021 ma chai alili aba covid ko prabhav bhayo tesai karan kina bhancha yo baira jati pani baira gako bhayo manche thiyo telai chai ghar wa wa khushi gara khera chai aba hami gaun le ko system ma chai aba आपने मंजे भेट् पर्ने खाना पीना दिखने पर्ने रहा कतिवटा अब मरी मराव बेह कार्य में अजा आजा में हम अब पूजा आजा में अंत खेत में काम कर पर में खेतला पार संग जमघट भर काम कर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन देर वॉज थ्री फोर केसेस अफ कोविड इंसिडेन्स दैट इज मेनली बिकज द पीपल हू वेर वर्किंग इन द सीटीज दे केम बैक and because there is a social practice of visiting their relatives and in the ceremony they meet people so that could be the reason like it was spread to uh, three four people in the village otherwise it's uh, okay like there was no covid serious situation in the village thank you thank you so much to all of those who presented and to you naraj that was really great presentation and insights into the food system from the farmers so thank you so much for their presentations um we do have um i'll i'll hand over to alejandro and then i can um moderate the questions if you like uh, thank you naraj and thank you um to our 
both groups presenting this morning or this afternoon, this evening. Um, and I think it just highlights um, the richness and resilience of indigenous food systems in mountains. So it's similar in uh, the other cases um, that um, we have presented last week and also what our sisters and brothers of other mountain communities, be it in Tajikistan or Kyrgyzstan or um, Kenya or uh, in the Americas have told us. Um, so um, I, I, I just uh, um, want to stress again um, that, um, you know, we've, um, as a group, um, I think um, a, a, as a network that is growing and becoming more stronger, um, also our responsibility is to continue to um, enrich um, our systems and uh, provide, keep providing for food to our communities and inspiration to other communities in the world is the, of utmost importance. And um, you know we have to keep um, to keep um, you know just going forward. Um, we hope to have uh, the next walking workshop um, uh, hopefully um, next year. Um, we're thinking in in Nepal uh, with a, a new member. We have uh, the Vertical University. Uh, in the KTK belt um, and um, looking forward to um, uh, reuniting all the group again um, next year. So Christina, I will um, ask you please to um, you know, moderate the questions. Okay, thanks Alejandro. Um, so um, we have a question from uh, Jelena Haynes. Would you like to turn your camera on and also introduce your organization, please? Thank you. Great. We, um, I'm not particularly registered to any group. Uh, I'm working as an individual. I'm working one with indigenous uh, community in South Australia. So I pretty much as researchers and working with them as a um, member of the community in arts and cultural preservation. So um, we have our own garden, so we produce. I'm from the Philippines, so uh, my knowledge, we in, in, involve it in the garden as well. So we, be, we built our garden based on my understanding how I grew up in the Philippines. So that's why I was interested in att attending the workshop. So what my husband, my husband just went out. So he was the one that answered the uh, ask the question if we, those community presenting and mentioning the um, plants that they're growing in the community, do they have a list of the plants that they're growing available for us to be able to share it to the rest of the world? Uh, the list of the different medicinal plants are called list of you know? Yes, they have. Uh, the, we have the list of the medicinal plants, uh, but mm -hmm. then it's in the mostly the local names. So we have to find okay. out its uh, botanical and other names, English names, and all. It will yeah. take some time. Because some of the plants that you mentioned, I seems to remember I growing up because I grew up in the mountain in the Philippines as well. So okay. hearing hearing those plant names, a kind of um, I vaguely remember what they are and how they're growing up in my home country. So I was interested uh, how those plants survive in the summertime because uh, South Australia, is, the summer is quite hot. So I'm just curious at how those plants grow up in the, in the hot weather area. I, because it's, these medicinal plants are mostly high altitude plants. Okay. So in the in the plains, I think hot climatic area, I doubt it will. It may not grow. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, welcome. Um, we have one more question. Um, participants have often mentioned winter root crops. Are there any summer staple root crops? Sorry? They want to ask if you have any summer staple root crops. Okay. Root crops are Goran Makane, some of them. Goran Makane. Toru Lodo. Toru Lodo. Goran Makane. 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 Jungle in the phone, then? Oh, thank you. Jungle in the phone, then she was a bouncer. I don't see that. Tapio. She was a bouncer. I don't see that. I don't see that. So, in the hello, I think uh, during summertime there is no root crops except to something a little bit tapioca. They grow. And okay. from now on, from now on, with this October onwards, you may start getting the root crops. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. I think we'll. Um, we don't have much time left. There, there's one more question in the chat. Maybe uh, Soma KP can ask quickly. I think this this will have to be the last question. Are you there, Soma KP? Hello. Good evening. Good afternoon. Um, yes, that was my question, particularly from the women of what are their roles and what are the traditional practices of processing and managing their food uh, systems because seasonality causes shortages and uh, what is the traditional method of storage of processing to manage the uh, security of food in seasons when there is less availability was my question and is that primarily the women's role as it is elsewhere, especially milk products, meat products, and the pickling, etc., that they mentioned. Uh, with no, off season for like that. Hello. Uh, what she's telling is like there is normal way, there is a regular practice of storing cereals are there in the house itself. They have a container like thing. And for the vegetables, they have a kind of a fermentation. Uh, they'll do a kind of a fermentation process, which can be uh, like mostly green vegetables. They do fermentation and keep it, and they dry it also later on after fermentation, and they can keep it for a longer time. Okay. Thank you so much. We don't have a huge amount of time. Um, there's some interesting comments in the chat about... Um, the incidence of diabetes um, being relatively lower in the mountain, among mountain inhabitants, could be uh, related to some types of vegetables such as bitter ground. Um, and um, uh, that the traditional food systems have been hugely impaired uh, by policies for forest conservation um, in India. So, um, I, unfortunately, I think we've, we've pretty much run out of time, but we have um, one person with a hand up. So very quickly, Sandeep, um, over to you if you'd like to quickly ask or make a comment. Uh, yes, um, thank you very much for these very interesting presentations. I just wanted to ask the speaker who talked about uh, beer made from finger millet being used in a range of different rituals. Can he perhaps say a little more about these rituals, uh, the, their nature and when do they occur during the uh, Agricultural season. <laughs> Baramba Sopai Kuru, like Martinez, or Chetan, so I 
Okay, it's very long. <laughs> so actually, uh, this they call it locally tea. The lepchas they call it tea, and limbu they call it tea, and other people they call it chang. And in Bhutia, uh, they call it, it's a basically prevail in this whole region and all the community, they use this. But Lipcha, they have the more closest relationship with this particular millet, fermented millet. So they, what uh, the old man is telling is, uh, when the first the creator created the, uh, first gave the cereals to the human, human being, he first gave this chi and asked him like, with this, you have to always worship him. Like, and, and like Hindu, they use rice grain for, uh, they call it just in the, in the initiating the puja or worship. They do with this uh, fermented millet. So while doing the agriculture practices also, if there is paddy plantation tomorrow or maize sowing tomorrow, today itself, they have to go to the field and do kind of a ceremony with this. Uh, fermented millet uh, for and, and 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 offer this to the the creator or the the deity so for every reason they use this and another important thing is uh, just this is my observation of this for your information this this is there is a way of a way of drinking this you know like the, 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 normally in the village a group of people they stay together and drink it like you see in the picture at the video okay so once you put that fermented millet in that container bamboo with kind of a straw you put water there and you have to wait for 15 to 20 minutes 30 minutes to get the real juice out of it so socially it is important because while waiting for that to be get a proper juice the people they have a time they will talk so it's a kind of socializing thing. The people exchange ideas, they interact with each other. So it's a kind of binding to the society. The another important aspect of this, this is our findings from the project. Another important aspect of this particular drink is, well in the field, when they work in the field, so they will put water in this particular container with the fermented millet and they go for the work for 15 minutes, half an hour. Meantime, the whole fermented millet will be extra i mean it releases juice they'll come back they drink so that will i mean they also um, they um, you know suffice their uh, thirst and they'll get a little bit of energy also. it's very energetic it gives it's a fermented a kind of alcohol a little bit so they'll get energy also so so they go and work they put water in the millet again to go back work they'll drink so it is give a continuous energy reviving kind of a, a kind of a, you know like energy drink for them in the field. Okay, thank you. That was very interesting. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Naraj, and all of the Lepcha and Limbu uh, men and ladies that presented. A big uh, thank you to you. Um, I'm conscious that we we've, we've run out of time, so we'll, we'll have to close now. So I'll hand over to Alejandro. Um, you like to 
So, Thanks, Christina. And uh, again, uh, thank you to everyone that has joined us um, uh, uh, for the last couple of hours. Um, uh, we're very, very proud of that have built this global network of mountain indigenous peoples. And um, I just want to thank our brothers and sisters in, uh, in China and uh, in India and the Eastern Himalayas and in Guangxi. And uh, we, um, um, again, um, if, even if I am redundant, I think we have to uh, look the future with hope. Um, we know that uh, good food, diverse food, healthy food uh, is our best bet against not just the pandemic, but also for our own economical recovery. So thank you very much, everyone. And uh, over to you, Christina, for the final words. Well, we don't have much time, but just briefly to say, I think we heard today that the diversity of traditional crops are imp so important for ecological sustainability, but for, for nutrition. And in both India and China, the communities emphasize the wild foods and the medicinal plants. And I also learned that apart from this nutritious diet, you know, that the working in the field has kept people very fit. And, I, and we know that COVID has hit people with diabetes in the West more than other people, you know, they'd be much more affected. So maybe that's a factor which has helped uh, reduce COVID um, impacts in these, in these indigenous communities. Um, so I, I just had a final uh, question for Alejandro. Um, uh, will these results be used in some way to inform the summit? Will they be documented, the key messages from these webinars? Um, I, I think you plan to produce a declaration from INMIP, is that right? Maybe. Yes, uh, INMIP is producing, uh, is working on a declaration, which uh, will be, uh, of course, um, discussed with all members, and we hope like, to have it um, before the uh, the summit, so that the voices of uh, our member communities and mountains can be uh, heard in one or other way um, during the discussions of the summit. Great. Well, thank you so much to everybody. And um, the, the key messages will be in that declaration. And, you know, we hope that this community together, we can get this evidence, this emerging evidence from the field um, of the great importance of indigenous food systems for our health and, and food security. Um, Thank you very much, everyone. I've really enjoyed all the presentations. Um, so, shishi a namaste. Bye. 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 Bye.